I, John Paul Harris, do solemnly, sincerely, and truly declare and affirm that the evidence I shall give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. You're John Paul Harris? I am. Was Ruth Rosemary Harris your daughter? Yes. Did you love her? Yes. Did you love her when you refused the blood transfusion? I never stopped loving her. I love her now. Now? Ruth is dead, Mr. Harris. To be with God is not to be dead. Well, you do your best to speak up, Mr. Harris. What did you say? I said to be with God is not to be dead. How do you make that out? By the evidence of the Bible and the example of Jesus Christ. How deep is your faith, Mr. Harris? It's what I am. Who taught it you? My father. Who taught him? His father. With respect to my learned friend, Harris's religious convictions are not under dispute. We know the details of his faith. We understand them and their consequences only too well. My lord, I'm trying to establish that Mr. Harris's faith constitutes his conscience. May I then remind the court that a man may reasonably and nobly follow the dictates of his conscience. There's no guilt there. Mr. Kent, I don't want to stop you from behaving and speaking the way you decide may be best for the defendant. And if it will assist you, I shall direct the jury that the defendant is perfectly entitled to his own beliefs. But that is, of course, a very different matter from omitting to fulfill the duty laid down by statute which he had towards his child. I'm obliged to your lordship. With respect to your lordship, I'm endeavouring to show the jury what Mr. Harris considered his duty. Mr. Harris, what did you consider your paramount duty to Ruth that night at the hospital? To protect her everlasting life. How did your action achieve that? Now, tell the jury in your own words, Mr. Harris. We live by the literal word of the Bible. We believe in its prophecies and look forward to the reward of eternal life on a perfect earth if we follow God's law, in which it is written, you shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh. And you interpret that to apply to blood transfusion? Yes. In the original Hebrew scriptures, the word eat means to absorb into the body. In transfusion, blood is taken into the body. If you had agreed to a blood transfusion, what do you believe would have happened to your child? By deliberately trying to prolong Ruth's earthly life in that way, we would have sacrificed her chance of resurrection and everlasting life in a perfect world. Well, why do you believe Ruth would have been punished for a decision that was not hers, but yours? Because it is written that the sins of the fathers shall be visited upon the children. On what specific grounds do you base your belief? On the written word. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Harris, I want the jury to understand your motives for the decision you took. Now, will you listen very carefully to what I have to say? And answer us carefully. We're dealing with very difficult theological issues, so I'll put my questions as simply as possible. Now, on the night in question, were you guided solely by your religious principles? Yes. Is religion a selfless thing? Religion's a personal thing. I, I think it should be selfless. You heard Dr. Brown's evidence? Yes. Is there any single part of it with which you disagree? Did it all happen as he said? Yes. How old was your child? Eight. Was she a happy child? Yes, very. Did you know her well? Ruth, did you know her well? Did she spend much time with you? Yes, we went everywhere together. A devoted family? Very devoted. Was she a religious child? Ruth, was she a religious child? Yes, I think... Think? What do you mean, think? Was she or wasn't she? R Ruth was a good child. You say that your father taught you your faith? He did. Did you teach that same faith to Ruth? Yes. Did she understand? Did she understand what you were teaching her? Ruth, did she understand? Well, how could I know? She was only eight. Oh, but you behaved as if you did know. What was your wife's religion before she married you? Church of England. Church of England. The mother changed her religion, then why not the daughter? I put it to you, Harris, that Ruth might have grown to womanhood 
and shed your faith like an outworn skin. By your own admission, she was happy. She enjoyed her temporary life. But you didn't pause to think that that little girl of eight years old might want to cling to this world. You hurried her into the next. No. Not no, Harris. Yes. No, no! In my submission, you didn't take in what was being said to you. You weren't really thinking. You relied on a miracle to save Ruth, and that's the truth. Well, the miracle didn't happen, but you risked her life. You put your personal faith before her welfare, and you let her die. You let Ruth die. <laughs> Mr. Harris, face the jury, please. Do you miss Ruth? Every moment. You miss her, you loved her, yet you willingly gave her up to God. Why? Tell the jury why. He is eternal, everlasting. His goodness is infinite. There's nothing comparable on earth. You mean to you, heaven is a very real place? Yes. As real as your own living room? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Harris. My lord, that's the evidence for the defense.